Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we have a super exciting one because we're gonna be showing you guys how we updated and how we built our College Cruiser electric skateboard version 2.0. And now, if you haven't watched our first video around a year ago, we built an electric skateboard around the Land Yachts Dropcat Seeker 33 inch longboard deck, which is an iconic deck from Land Yachts. We made this board specific for commuting around college campuses. Since then, we've made a ton of improvements, including upgrading from a mono drive to a dual drive, adding an all new set of custom 3D printed enclosures and an all new custom drivetrain. So stick around if you wanna see how we built this college cruiser specific electric skateboard on a Lanyard Dropcat Seeker 33 inch long longboard deck. The first major upgrade for the version 2 of the mini electric skateboard are the trucks, and these trucks are the 8 inch Seagull trucks from iWonder. The reason that we chose to use these is because they have these built in motor mounts, which makes the reliability and ease of assembly super easy. These trucks are pretty hard to find though, so if you're looking to do a similar build, we are actually releasing these new mini RKP trucks with built in motor mounts. They feature the same 10mm to 8mm step down axle found on all of the Evolve boards, all of the Evolve DKP clones and such, meaning that all of the wheel pulleys that work on those boards are compatible with these, and they also feature the exact same motor mount bolt pattern as all of those trucks, so most motor mounts that work with those boards will also work with these trucks. If you guys are interested in purchasing these trucks, we have a pre-order going right now, and there will be a link in the description below. We also have a link to our full-on RKP Mini Complete Mechanical Kit, which also includes the corresponding motor mounts and some 6355-170 kV motors. So once again, make sure to check out the link in the description below for those new products from Propulsion Boards. To go with these new custom trucks, we got some custom CNC motor mounts that I drew up in Onshape. We sent them over to PCBWay and within two weeks they were to us. The sponsor of this video is actually PCBWay and if you don't know already, PCBWay is your one-stop destination for custom PCB prototypes, 3D printing, CNC machining, vacuum molding, or injection molding. I submitted my step files for these mounts to PCBWay's automatic quoting service, got an instant quote, then got a verified quote, and within two weeks, these mounts were sent to me. They are super high quality, came super quickly, and were super affordable. So if you're looking for any sort of prototyping services, I highly recommend checking out PCBWay. We will leave a link in the description below for them. Now getting back to the motor mounts, these motor mounts are designed for 50mm motors from Flipsky, and they work exclusively with the Seagull trucks. They're machined from 6061 T6 Premium Aerospace Grade Aluminum. To mount these motor mounts to the trucks, I have eight countersunk M4 bolts and nuts. I then slid the plate over the hanger of the truck and used the bolts to secure the mount to the truck. I then repeated the exact same process, bolting the other mount to the other side of the truck. For the motors, I'm using two of Flipsky's 5055 140 kV motors. These each have a maximum power output of 1380 watts. The motor has an 8mm D-shaped shaft, and the phase wire connections are MR30 connectors. Though these aren't super powerful or torquey compared to a lot of other DIY electric skateboard motors, they are super lightweight, which is the reason that I'm using them on a portable electric skateboard. To mount the motors to the motor mount, I'm going to be using eight of these M4 by 5mm cap head bolts. I slid the motor into the slot on the motor mount and used the M4 bolts to thread into the holes already in the motor. For now, I'm not going to tighten these bolts all the way, as the motor's final position will be adjusted later when we tension the belts. I then repeated this exact same process for the second motor on the other side. The next part are these 15mm wide HTD5 8mm D shaped shaft motor pulleys which will go on our motors. To secure the motor pulley to the motor, I simply slid the pulley onto the shaft of the motor and then used the included set screw to hold the motor pulley in place, making sure to use blue Loctite so that it doesn't come loose. The wheel pulley that I'm using is a custom one that I drew up in CAD and 3D printed. It's a 38T Kegel wheel pulley with a 15mm width and HTD5 pitch. I designed these up in CAD and 3D printed them because there aren't any Kegel wheel pulleys that will work with these Seagull trucks. 
The wheel pulleys are designed to be of the press fit variety, and the bearing that I'm using with them is the one that came stock with the ABEC wheel pulleys that came with the Siegel trucks that I got. Overall, I just wanted to have Kegel wheels, so I made my own wheel pulleys just for this project. The belts that I'm using are the standard 265mm long, 5mm pitch, 15mm wide belts. The truck has this custom step up axle slash hanger part, so I needed these custom wheel pulleys, which is why I printed them. There's a rubber ring that goes on them, then the belt slides over that, and then the wheel pulleys can be slid onto the axle onto that hanger portion and rotated until the belt aligns with the pulleys. At this point, I tensioned and tightened up those motors to the motor mount by pulling the motor back, finding the proper belt tension, and then tightening those four bolts that hold the motor to the motor mount. The wheels that I'm using on this build are the 85mm Kagawamas from Orangutan. These are some of my favorite smaller wheels for electric skateboards. I love the aesthetic and the way they feel, which is why I had to go for them and why I opted for those custom wheel pulleys for the Kegel core. The installation of the wheels onto the rear hanger were quite easy. All I did was just to line up the Kegel pegs with the Kegel core on the wheel and snap the wheel into place and slide it onto the axle and then tighten it down using the axle nut. The belt covers that I used for this build are also custom 3D printed ones that I designed along with the motor mounts. To install the belt covers on the motor mount, I first aligned the two holes of the belt cover with the two threaded holes that I designed into the motor mount, and then I used two M4 by 8mm cap head bolts to hold the two together. And that's how we built the drivetrain for this updated board. I'm honestly super happy with how this came out. I'm using the same Lanyard's Dropcat 33 Seeker deck for this build, which I personally really love. Nice and compact, but also nice and comfortable. To start off, we just bolted the trucks to the board just like you would with any other standard electric skateboard or skateboard. I also installed these Streadlights mounts so that I could have lights on my board when I ride at night. Now moving to the front enclosure and the battery installed in that, the front enclosure is the same one that I used at the end of the last video, it's this custom 3D printed one that matches the contour of the Land Yachts Dropcat Seeker deck. The battery is a 12S1P21700 Molosel P42A battery. It's nice and compact and fits perfectly inside this enclosure. Because the battery is in its own enclosure and nothing else needs to be done with this one, I mounted it to the deck pretty early in the build process. Before doing that though, I attached this harness that goes from the front enclosure to the rear enclosure with this braided cable sleeve on it. I used 6 M5 cap head bolts to hold the enclosure to the deck, and they thread into the brass nut inserts that are already installed in the deck from the last build. The ESC that I'm using for this build is a really old Fockbox Tanka sample that I got quite a while ago. The Fockbox Tanka is a decent dual vesk based ESC. It's definitely over spec for the build that I'm doing, but it's nice and compact, and I was looking for something vesk based I wouldn't recommend getting this one if you're looking to do a similar build because there are some cheaper and slightly more compact options. The ESC enclosure that I'm using is a custom one that I drew up in CAD and 3D printed as well. This one has also been specifically designed for the rocker and the concave of the deck which is super nice and has all of the holes pre-drilled which means that everything is already perfectly fitted. To begin the rear enclosure assembly I started by mounting the power switch in the rear enclosure by inserting it into the hole and then using the nut to lock the power switch to the enclosure. I then made this XT60 cable harness, which will go from the harness from the front enclosure to the rear enclosure and then into the Foxbox Tanka. I got a bunch of super glue, put it on this XT60 connector, and then slid it into this XT60 connector shaped hole that I 3D printed into the rear enclosure. I then added some hot glue just to make sure that it was nice and tight and wasn't going to come loose. I then added something to this build which I've never tried before, which are these waterproof rubber O grommets. These basically are going to sit between the enclosure, the outside, and cover up the phase wires. I installed them into these holes that I pre-designed into the rear enclosure. I then routed the phase wires into the rear enclosure through these holes and installed the ESC just to get a rough idea of how everything was going to fit together inside. I then hooked up all of the phase wires, three from one motor into three phase wires on one ESC and three from the other motor into all of the other three phase wires on the other side of the ESC and then hook up the sensor wires using these sensor wire adapters 
which go from the 5 pin on these 5055 motors to the 6 pin on most VESC based ESCs. I then plugged the power switch into the ESC and then connected the main battery leads to the XT60 on the ESC. The last component that I have is the remote controller, which is the VX1 that I used in the last build. This is one of my favorite remote controllers for DIY electric skateboards. Tried, tested, super reliable, super ergonomic, and overall I love it. To connect the receiver to the ESC, I plugged in the cable to the UART port on the Tanka. Note that this is the V4 based UART cable. I also plugged in the voltage reading cable from the VX1 into the voltage pin on the Tanka just so that the receiver can read the voltage and tell the remote how much battery I had and then I velcroed in the receiver to the enclosure. Next, I programmed the board using the VESC tool, though I'm not gonna be showing you guys how I did that in this particular video. At this point, it was just kind of a mad scramble to get everything to fit inside the enclosure, so I got to work and fiddled with everything until it all fit, and then I flipped the enclosure over and made sure nothing was snagged. I then used four M5 cap head bolts to mount the enclosure to the deck, using the same brass threaded nut inserts that were already in the deck from the last build. Lastly, I plugged the rear enclosure in for power, using the XT60 that I'd glued into the edge of the enclosure and the harness from the front battery. At this point, version 2 of the College Campus Cruiser electric skateboard was done, and this is what the finished project looked like. So there you guys have it, that's how we built our second version of the Lanyots Dropcat Seeker 33 inch based college cruiser electric skateboard. In terms of specs, this board has a top speed of around 22 miles an hour, a range of anywhere from 8 to 12 miles depending on how aggressively it's ridden. The torque is decent but it's not really built for that. The acceleration and braking are super smooth with that VESC based ESC and can be tuned to perfection. It's super boardable and lightweight at just around 14 and a half pounds so it can be carried around between classes. Overall, I'm super happy with how this project turned out, especially with all the custom parts. A huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and for all those CNC'd components. They turned out super great. If you guys are interested in learning more about PCBWay, we'll leave a link in the description below once again for them. If you guys have any questions or comments, please let us know in the comment section below and we'll make sure to get back to you. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for lots of other DIY electric skateboard content. Once again, thank you so much for watching and we will see you guys in the next video.